Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Erica Hagen, and I'm going to be talking to you about uh, participatory budgeting and mapping with OpenStreetMap in Kenya. Um, that Map Kibera and Ground Truth Initiative have been doing together um, over the past couple of years. This right here is the, I guess, the male side of a participatory budgeting meeting in um, rural Kenya. Uh, participatory budgeting is when people uh, take part in deciding budget priorities for their community, so they actually allocate portions of the government budget um, and help decide where it should go. Um, just a little background. This is Kibera, Nairobi, an informal settlement where Map Kibera originated. My partner, Mikkel, and I uh, started in 2009, um, and the organization is still ongoing today. Back in 2009, um, 13 youth uh, from Kibera put their community on the map using GPS devices, paper, um, and uh, OpenStreetMap. So the Kibera slum is home to around a quarter of a million people in Nairobi. And uh, more recent appearance of Kibera on, the, on OpenStreetMap with a little close-up of some of the things mapped you can go ahead and have a look anytime. It's kind of in the south southwest part of Nairobi. Um, Kibera News Network also is part of Map Kibera. Uh, this is a video team doing media and reporting on issues of relevance to the Kibera people, including issues that are um, demonstrated on the map as well. And one of our principles is giving data back and information access. This is uh, my colleague Lucy Fondo, who will be speaking in a moment, um, handing out a school's map, one of our sort of more important projects we feel that we've worked on lately in the past several years is mapping all the informal schools, of which there are many <laughs> in Kibera and also other informal settlements in Nairobi. Um, these education providers cover when government isn't providing education as mandated to children in these areas. So um, that's a school teacher in one of our schools. Um, we always work with community members directly and they do all of the work and train. And then also we engage people in the community such as these school leaders who are trying to advocate for uh, resources for themselves and advocate for what citizens want in challenging settings. But what about the rural part of the country. So we've spent the better part of 10 years working in urban environments primarily and mapping them. And um, a couple of years ago, we were invited to work with the World Bank to map uh, participatory budgeting allocations, that is projects that people had decided on um, in rural parts of Kenya. So now I will hand it over to Lucy. Hello, my name is Lucy Fondo, and I've been working with Map Kibera since 2009. And uh, on this project, I happen to be one of the training trainers, and uh, for sure, it was a great experience interacting with the different youths from the different counties, and also interacting with some of the government officials. Yeah. So to begin with. Um, as you can see from the slide, we have the rural counties and uh, Map Kibira was privileged to work with some of the three counties that World Bank was able to train the government officials on the public participation process for which they were to go back to these counties, that is uh, West Pokot, Baringo and Makueni to teach the local communities on the process of public participation. From the picture, we can see a group of women and uh, they've attended a public budget participation meeting. And we can see 
the women are discussing on the budget priorities. They, had to dis they are discussing on the budget priorities since the county officials or authorities were, were able to engage them in discussions so that they can prioritize the, pro the, the projects that they want to be put across their, their county. So with the mapping county projects, we're able to map projects like Boda Boda Sheds, schools, and water points. So we were tasked with like going to the field and having the accurate information of these projects. Since it will, be, it will help in uh, tracking of these projects to identify whether the projects have com are complete, have they stalled, or they are ongoing. So it was very important to capture these projects very well. In the next uh, slide, you can see the Open Data Kit interface. Um, Map Kibera was called upon to do some data gathering since initially um, the, it was hard to like have documentation of these projects because uh, res, uh, the residents or citizens depended, depended on drawing the maps on the ground and they had to like have a rough idea of where exactly these projects are. So with this uh, open data kit interface, it was a good platform for storing the data that can be used for future reference. And also the county officials would use the platform to track some of this information. Apart from that, it was also a platform for us for creating our project, like coming up with questionnaires about the project. Um, after preparing the data that we did on Open Data Kit, we went ahead and did preparations on how to like go to the field. And what happened was uh, we had to like mobilize different teams every day since they, they were going to different locations. And from the picture, you can see we are trying to set up um, uh, the phone since it was the one that we used to collect data from the field. So it was very important for us every day to do a setup to avoid like uh, doing mistakes on the field. So the team, as you see, is about to go to the field. Hello again, and um, thank you, Lucy. Here we're going to play a short video uh, showing what it was like to do the field mapping, and then we'll come back. After mapping projects and points of interest in Wote Makweni County, Mapkibira team headed to Mboni, the second ward. Peter, Lucy, Zach, and I. The road to Mboni was not good enough. One and a half hours drive, we arrive at Kikima. At the subboard admin office, Zach leads a recap session from the previous training exercise. Soon after, I follow group 11. We take a probox car towards the northwest mountain side in order to start from the farthest end. Going through the forests, moving from school to school, dam to dam. Sometimes it was easy, sometimes it was hard. Sometimes it was cold, sometimes it was warm. Sometimes we used the car. Sometimes we used the motorbike. Sometimes we just walked. At Zemvuni, we meet the chief. The ongoing mapping is very essential 
to the area because uh, when doing mapping it will assist very much people to an, uh, uh, identifying of the projects uh, which are in the in our area people including school heads cooperated so well with us Day two of the mapping, I followed group six to map Kikima projects and facilities. Day three, it was serious editing at Xiombugo Hotel in Wote. Yeah, I was in group 11. I went with Madam Ruth. The food is good and we really enjoyed Although we come up, we come across some challenges which are obvious. The terrain in Boni is very steep. You, some areas you go, they, they are steep. So climbing those hills is not easy. Yeah, it is, uh, it is surprising for me because actually I'm mapping my home. The people whom I'm consulting with the projects are my people, I know them. I've been able to learn how to use the GPS, how to use the HODK, and how to upload the to OpenStreetMap and do some editing. The Boni and the Chunza Veni. I would like to congratulate them for taking the youths, especially the youths, to undertake the course, not the grown-ups, because the youths are the future of tomorrow. I just wish they would just map all the, the words in Makwini, at least for us to be in a position to locate each, each, each project in, in, in every word. It has been a nice experience, a nice opportunity, and given another chance and more training, we can do it better. Map Kibira will be headed next to Baringo County. Owina Joshua, Kenan McQueeny. After having this data, it was uh, Map Kibira again had to put this information to a site, and from this site, we were able to have the different categories and also again the project it showed the status of the project and again the website again would also have several like it had several categories so if you go on each category you could see for example we have uh, ECDE um, and it has information about the ECDE, we have the opinion of the project, is it excellent, and uh, is the project complete? Yeah, so this is the information that we're able to put on the website. Then we have uh, details on the on water projects. You're able to see the opinion from the second clip, you're able to see that the opinion is poor. So. From here, I hand over the next session to Erica again. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, so uh, taking a look at the website here that was created um, to just kind of bring together the data points. So obviously in OpenStreetMap, we only had the kind of basics. And then, uh, but we had also collected during the survey uh, things like the project status and whether it was... Uh, considered in a good condition, the quality level, some notes. Um, none of that was included in OpenStreetMap. So we had to create this kind of website to bring them together. As you see here, the blue dots are actually points of interest. So um, alongside all of the project mapping was quite a lot of um, mapping of other features, base mapping in OSM. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, while we used ODK for the data collection, we used it through Kobo Toolbox. Um, Kobo is, uh, has a humanitarian version that's free for agencies like that. Um, and it's, it was 
really great to use, but there were some technical difficulties moving from ODK kind of style output up into JAWSM. And I'm happy to talk through how we worked through that. Um, and actually we are working right now with Kobo and a small open source development grant to help integrate those two systems better and make it possible to have the output from the ODK Kobo system uh, really match better with what JAWSM and the tagging system need in OSM. So um, we're really excited about the potential to use this app. Another really exciting thing that we got to do was uh, create this awesome offline data sharing initiative. So this is actually Baringo's map being painted on a wall in the capital of that county including uh, the names of all of the different projects that the county had done and uh, their status at the time, um, whether they've been completed or not. So anyone could come up and see this and ch check it out and see what the county's been doing and whether the things that they uh, intended in their budget participatory budgeting sessions have been achieved. Um, and then we also created, as we almost always do, a print map version of that data. So this is one of the wards. Each ward had a separate map. Um, this shows um, in green are the projects that are completed. Red is stalled or not yet started. Um, and all of the different sort of departments associated, like whether it's a water project or a school project or whatnot. Um, so this map was printed out and actually uh, used in, uh, in participatory budgeting meetings to see where things were at. And this is where we could see that the kind of process of using this data for transparency and accountability um, was really possible because uh, at, at any participatory budgeting meeting are certain officials that are tasked with overseeing those meetings and um, directing the process. So they were there to specifically answer questions like, you know, why was this particular thing not done? What's going on with the status of this project? This one here, um, you know, isn't up to, up to our standards or all of these kinds of questions could be also discussed um, amongst the community members and with relevant officials present. Um, yeah. So let's see, this is one of the more urban settings for a PV meeting with a lot of participants here. So now on to a couple of bit uh, text heavy slides here, but um, I think that this project has really uh, shown some exciting opportunities for using OpenStreetMap in government, in local government particularly. A lot of times, at least in Kenya, we've worked tried to look at the national level of government because um, that was where a lot of the power was held. But this process of devolution um, to the counties, which only started around um, a decade ago and has been progressing since then, um, has really created this kind of lo more local government agency and ability to actually develop and execute budgets. Um, so targeting those county leaders who are interested in um, mapping and in having the benefits of mapping has been really interesting. Um, we actually started out working just with the budget uh, departments and the finance departments because of the PB process. And they also had all of the data on the projects that have been allocated and so forth. Um, but as we began to work, we realized that these other offices really need to be involved like planning and lands um, it, where possible. If there's a GIS person, ICT was a common department, m and &E. Um, and as well as budgeting. Um, so we, in our second phase of this work, we actually started to work a lot more closely with the, these different um, departments um, and try to kind of integrate this method of, of mapping and the benefits of OpenStreetMap into their kind of um, backend processes of whatever they were Doing, which is a lot easier when you have governments that are kind of still just starting up processes and especially technology related things. Um, they, they are often still developing systems. Um, monitoring and evaluation, using OSM and citizen feedback together for like monitoring and evaluation was really interesting. 
um, visualizing that status of each project and quality, um, demonstrating that citizens can be partners to the government for mapping and data, even when they are also doing feedback. So that was another kind of cool pilot aspect of this was, you know, really demonstrating to those local government officials, like what ways they can involve citizens. They all are supposed to involve citizens. Um, there's this kind of public participation mandate they can do it the different ways, the counties. Um, they often maybe don't do it very well. So this is kind of demonstrating how it could actually be to their benefit. Um, so they don't have like budgets for doing mapping most of the time. They don't have a lot of resources. So um, having people take part, uh, we think that we demonstrated how that could actually be kind of efficient for them. Um, and we also showed, we think, how the citizens can use data to hold um, officials accountable for the status of these projects. So really showing like those photos and the status and the kind of, you know, whether the people had remarked on it as a poor or high quality was actually um, meaningful in this situation. It wasn't just kind of abstract or it wasn't just kind of people trying to show something to government, but it was actually like the government really needed this information. They have a monitoring and evaluation that they need to do themselves. Um, and let's see. And for challenges, of course, there's always a lot of challenges. Um, the government data literacy, as you might imagine, and technical literacy is tends to be quite low. Um, sometimes they have like an ICT person, but they tend to hire junior staff for these roles. It's changing, but it depends on the county and the government. Um, one thing that we found a little bit difficult was that um, there was there's one positive kind of trend is to establish these GIS, um, hire GIS officers, use maps in general. Um, there was this push across the counties to create GIS offices, but then those GIS offices tended to just be kind of like a set of computers in a particular room with maybe some junior GIS officers who are trained only in particular, um, maybe Esri, and that was about it. And if they'd been exposed to OSM, all the better, but a lot of them maybe hadn't, um, or even just kind of in understanding broader um, concepts in geography and in um, data management, uh, that was not necessarily part of what their job was. So um, geodata being kind of siloed on, almost like, well, we need a map for this. We need a map for that. We need to like create a, you know, a plan, um, these kind of land, uh, managed lands and um, cadastral maps and things like that, but not connecting that with maybe their m &E systems, their data management systems, not really being unified in any way. Um, another interesting <laughs> challenge we had was that donors and organizations funded by those donors, um, as well as direct support, were often going to these counties, but not in any coordinated way. So um, there wasn't necessarily any incentive really to, um, so for example, like one foundation or NGO or donor um, country might pay for like a consultant to create an m and &E system, like a digital, like just a computer somebody to program an M&E system. And then separately, we're working with the World Bank on the participatory budgeting mapping, which also includes M&E data. Um, and these two things are kind of running simultaneously because the donor, the donors are kind of um, not talking to each other. And then those departments are kind of open to whatever, wherever they can source funding, they're um, going to probably try to source it because they are under-resourced otherwise. So coordination in general, even at this pretty local level, was very difficult. Um, and another challenge is just, you, there's always a challenge explaining what the benefits of OpenStreetMap and open data in general will be um, for governments. So I think that just goes across the board. We worked with these pretty progressive counties, so they had open government policies in place. Um, so they had this kind of idea that this should be a thing. <laughs> So maybe that was almost these were the easier ones, but there's always individuals within that those depart those offices who might kind of not really agree with it. So they might kind of put a little bit of a, a speed bump in the way, for example. So a lot of these are just common things to work with government and data. 
um, citizens are not typically part of any of these processes, certainly not data production, but not necessarily even consumption of data. So, um, you know, we really wanted to create this kind of use case that could show how this was a win-win situation, really, um, for the local government to get data and maps that they wanted and for citizens to also be able to track what was going on and plan better for their county. Um, financial management systems also don't necessarily exist or they're not digital. Um, this is all the digitization of government is just kind of happening um, now. So uh, working within that is a challenge. But um, yeah, I would welcome uh, your questions now. And right there on is the actual counties. Um, it's just on Map Kibera GitHub right now. Um, this is still considered a pilot, so we're hoping to progress as soon as we can. But of course, participatory budgeting meetings are on hold due to COVID right now in Kenya. So um, perhaps next year. Hi, um, so thanks so much, um, Erica and Lucy, for such a wonderful presentation. Um, really uh, learned a lot during that talk and can see that there's loads of questions um, coming through uh, on the pad. Um, so if you don't have the pad open, um, if you go to the session description on the program, um, then you can open it up, see other people's questions and add your own. Um, but I'm going to start walking through some of these now. Um, before doing that, I have to mention, Erica, so pleased to see the hat, the, the symbol of State of the Map 2020 has made it into this, this session. Um, I'm going to uh, kick off with a question um, for you, and then maybe if you can guide me to pass it around um, different members of the team um, after that, if, if relevant. Um, so the first question um, that came through was a question around what um, software platforms that you've used um, besides OSM in your project. Um, so just wondering if you can kick us off by um, answering that. Sure. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Yes, I, I thought I would bring this hat back <laughs> for your enjoyment. Um, so we, as, as mentioned later, probably after that question was asked, we use ODK Collect, um, the actual ODK Collect app, and then Kobo Toolbox. Um, it's sort of like a front end, really, for ODK. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the, those, those are the tools that we primarily use. And then we also had to convert data into something that OSM could better understand after we took it out of ODK, we also use um, uh, what's it called Hexel proxy <laughs> to get a little technical here to turn kind of automatically translate our spreadsheet into something we could work with in JAWSM. So then we use JAWSM. Um, we used yeah, I guess that's that's all the tools. Great, um, thanks for that. And then there's another follow on question that's kind of related, um, which is um, just asking if you'd had problems with um, ODK um, and if so, how had you gone about um, overcoming those? Well, yes, <laughs> that's, I mean, I think that Kobo, the interface is really um, helpful for working more easily with ODK. But um, so, you know, we, I guess we had the initial kind of trouble with like just getting ODK started and working with it. Um, and then that kind of removed that trouble because it helps you to create surveys um, pretty easily and especially really complicated ones like we were doing. So yeah, those, that was the main problem we at first had, but then there was also the fact that it sort of speaks a different language than OSM. It's not, it doesn't speak tags. <laughs> um, we had to really work hard at kind of getting the output to be as close as possible to what JAWSM would be able to um, take in um, in terms of the tagging structure. So I'm happy to like share with anybody how what we went through, but that's why we decided to pursue this grant to try to actually make the integration better. And I'm also happy to talk with anybody about what we're actually planning to do there. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's challenge. It doesn't, if you're not super techie, it's not that easy to work with between the two. Um, and maybe even if you are, but 
um, we we made it work and we're happy with it. We've used it on other projects um, since. Um, great, um, thanks for that explanation. Um, so I can see people still editing away questions. So please um, keep continue adding them in. Um, another question which has come in from um, Jidani in Taiwan asking, so is OSM better than Google in Kenya by now? Um, so turning that over to the team. Um, well, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to answer that one. Um, I would say that it kind of depends on what you're, what you're mapping. So we've put a lot of effort into mapping certain parts of Kenya and specifically a lot of Nairobi, a lot of the informal settlements, and then these counties. Um, so it might depend on the place. There are um, certain businesses that might be more likely to be found on Google map at this point in Nairobi, for example. Um, but we are working on, but so it depends what you're using it for, but I would say in general, yes. Perfect. Um, thanks for that. Um, so I'm just doing a time check of where we've got um, about 10 minutes left um, in this session. Um, so still time to get through a few more questions. Um, so one of the questions that's come in from someone says, um, you produce fantastic maps. How much training did people need to be able to create them? And um, with any of your maps, um, do you show financial or budget information um, on, on the maps themselves? Well, let me... Let I'll answer the second part and then I'll pass it to Lucy for the first part. Just route the budget information. Actually, we did integrate budget data into the participatory budgeting map, um, sort of visual, uh, the, the website. So yes, um, sometimes we do, but not that information is not in OSM. Um, Lucy, you want to talk about the training aspect? Can you hear us, Lucy? I'm not sure if she heard. You there, Lucy? Oh, sorry. I think the question yeah. was yeah, about Lucy, how much there's training. Yeah, talking about the trick. Yeah. yeah. How much training have you been providing um, to people in order to be able to create the maps that you showed in the presentation? You're asking like how much training we've been giving to people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It 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 depends on the duration of the of the project, most of the time we, we usually take like around three weeks. Yeah, yeah, three weeks is enough. Yeah, depending on the duration of the project. It can even take longer, but it, it just depends. Yeah. Great. Okay, so so quite a lot of, yeah. um, of training sessions then. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but I think that includes the the mapping itself, right, Lucy? Like the training process is less yeah. classroom and more kind of on the go <laughs> practical stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think clearly. Yeah. Oh, there's a bit of a follow up yes, coming in actually on this, which is mm -hmm. um, for example, um to create the maps in QGIS. Is that something your team does or are you training new people to do that? Or um, yeah, is that something you're doing or are you training others in it? Oh, for the for the print maps, for example. Maybe that's what they mean. The the print maps have varied. Um, yes, we we have team members who work with the data in QGIS, for example, but that would be our like lead team members. So they've been working on mapping for years. Um, so we haven't gotten to the point where we could train people in the field too much or just 
you know, our typical mapper is learning how to edit in JAWSM. So that's already a big step. <laughs> and that's usually, um, but connecting to opportunities to learn more GIS and software um, is always, always out there too, um, for the really motivated. Um, this website you saw, Ground Truth created that, and mostly Mikkel created that. Um, we, we basically pull in wherever we need the talent. Um, yeah, so. Perfect. So I'm just looking at the time. Um, we probably have time for one more question before we need to switch over for the next session. Um, so I'm going to um, ask a question for Lucy, um, which yeah. says you, you mentioned that you've been working with Map Kibera since 2009. Um, so we wanted to ask... Right. Um, how how have attitudes to OSM changed in Kenya since 2009? And how have you got buy-in with local government um, for your projects? Come again, please. Um, so the first bit was about how um, attitudes uh, towards OpenStreetMap um, have changed in Kenya since 2009. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the, do you want to answer that piece first? Yeah, let me answer that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a true that I've been working with Map Kibera since 2009. And from what I've seen since 2009, we've been able to like involve different groups, like making them be contributors on OSM and, uh, an example is that we've been able like, to recruit youths from different parts of Kenya and also outside Kenya. And also we've been able to engage with different groups from different organizations. Yeah, so um, from my side, I can say that we've, we've had great, a big number of contributors contributing to OpenStreetMap. Yeah, yes. So the response has been great. People have like been contributing more and more. Yeah. Great. Um, that's great to hear. Um, right. So I'm just yeah. looking at the time. Um, we need to, to close the session now to leave some time to switch over for the next session. Um, so actually the next session is going to be still in this, in this same um, in track two uh, with Erica talking again about um, sustainability and OpenStreetMap for development. Um, so I'm gonna be hanging around for that too. So looking forward to it. Um, so just wanna say thank you so much to the speakers, um, to Lucy, um, especially so late um, in Nairobi to dial in for this, um, and to Erica from, from DC on a, a national holiday. Um, appreciate your guys' availability and, and sharing um, this experience with us. Um, and stick around for the next session. Can I just say, should we, can we, should we type answers in the pad? We can do that yeah that would be brilliant. yeah okay typing ty typing questions to the ones we missed out would be wonderful okay. um yeah thank you so much all right okay. speak to everyone a bit bye